Hello, my name is Santiago Belch, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Xcode and source control. Now, in my example, I'm going to be using Bitbucket, but at the same time, if you have a GitHub account and a GitHub repository, the same steps will apply. So the first thing that you need to do to get started is have an existing project ready to go that you're ready to commit into source control. Now, usually I recommend starting source control before you write a single line of code. So once you have your project and Xcode ready to go, the next thing that you need is in fact your actual Bitbucket or GitHub repository. Now I've gone ahead and created a sample repository for this demo. If you haven't, then just follow the steps on Bitbucket or GitHub to create a repository. Once you have that going, you're going to look for an overview link. This is going to tell you what the Git repository URL is going to be. In this case, I've highlighted it here. It's going to change for everyone, but it's going to look something along the lines of the same thing if you're on Bitbucket or GitHub, usually ending in .git as your in main indicator. Once you have this URL, you're actually going to copy that. So let's save that and return to Xcode. You're going to go to source control. You're going to go into your task wall or project working copy and you're going to see the side menu pops up and it's going to say configure task wall. In, this, in your case, it's going to be configure and then your project name. Once you have this window showing up that lets you configure source control, you're going to go to remotes. You're going to press add and then add remote. Here, you're going to type in the address and then origin you can leave as default, although you can always look back at the repository and see here what the name should be. In our case, it would be origin and press add remote. So you can see it shows up here. You're good to go. You can actually press done. You're going to go back into the source control menu. You're going to press refresh status. And now in the process that you're actually going to follow for the very first time, when it's a brand new repository that is empty, you're actually just going to push. That means that you're going to take code that you have on your computer and push it onto the server. So this is the first step that we need to do. Now, for any source control related items, you need to commit everything that you are going to save. So in my case, I've already actually previously committed some of the work, but here I have some changes. So I'm going to call it uh, initial commit and then press commit file. Anytime you make any changes on Xcode, you will be using this commit. Afterwards, you're going to press push. This will actually load up the repository on the remote server and create a new branch called master and you're going to press push. Now, depending on the size of your project, this might take a few minutes. So we're just going to give it a minute here. Okay. So we just saw that it gave us a message saying that the project was successfully pushed. And now let's make a change to our project so that you understand the process that you have to do whenever you're working with source control in Xcode and actually all source control in general. So I'm just going to make a random comment. Uh, this is just a random change that I want to do. Uh, and then you're always going to remember three simple steps you're going to commit, which means that you're going to save every change that you've done to your local repository on your computer. You're going to pull changes from the server. Now, if you're the only one working, it might not make sense why you're pulling on the server, but because you want to start building good habits in terms of source control. You want to always be pulling things from the server first to make sure that you have the most up-to-date version. Also, if you don't do this, it's going to give you an error. So always pull. If you get this thing that says, you know, you have uncommitted changes, remember the first step is that you actually have to commit all your changes. And then the last step, step three, you're going to push. So let's go ahead and do step one, commit. I'm just going to be added random comment. I'm going to commit the file. Then I am going to pull from the server. Once it tells me it's up to date, that means I am good to go to push. I will push my local changes. This should go faster because it is now only tracking the changes I've made. It's going to push that last comment I made onto the server and now we're good to go. In fact, if we look at Bitbucket now on the website, we'll see that our repository will no longer be empty once I refresh. So as you can see here, I've actually made changes already. You can see the commits I've created, my initial commits I made, added my random comment. So this is all history that's being tracked now on source control here on Bitbucket. And you can see everything I have here is now being saved. 
Now, a little word of advice is that when you're working with Xcode, I strongly, highly suggest that you do not use terminal or any command line tool. I would not use Bitbucket's source tree app or GitHub's GitHub app. Xcode has a very good functioning repository system and you will encounter a lot of issues and errors down the road if you do not use the built-in function within source control here on Xcode. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. My name is Santiago Beltran, and this was a video on how to use source control with Xcode. Thank you very much.